How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and do the uh, gameplay and review of the Kiravets K700. So it's one of the new tractors, one of the two that they've given us. And uh, yeah, even though it's a little bit different to the normal trucks, I'll send it through the course and see how it does. Uh, engine wise, gone for the top engine, it's A on the power, so it's not too bad. To be fair, I've never really found the power too much of an issue with this thing. Uh, gearbox gone for the advanced special, it just seems to be the quickest one. There is no raisable suspension, but it sits pretty high anyway because it's on uh, 63 inch tyres. They're the tyres that are kind of custom with it, kind of the yellow rims and that, and I like the tread pattern, but as you scroll through, these tyres just have better stats from what I can see anyway. It's like, um, yeah, it gives us a pretty vague description, but they appear to be the. Uh, better ones and I think they are just like the sort of normal mud tyres. Uh, I've gone for the strongest winch, frame add-ons, there's just uh, what they're called, wheel arches, there's that thing that's like a van body add-on that's got 800 points and 6 spare tyres, so that's not too bad. And then that manipulator crane which uh, is kind of a unique thing to this. It's the same vehicle that used to be in uh, Mudrunner and yeah in theory you can use that to pick up hay bales, it, it's not very good at picking up scouts or anything. Uh, there's a couple of different alloys, I can't remember which ones I picked in the end, but they're not too important. Uh, as for the colours, it's got all the usual ones. Looks pretty cool in black. Grey is alright, white looks pretty cool as well. And then uh, there's these few custom colours. The yellow and red I'm going to stick with because it's kind of just sort of noticeable. Uh, there was blue and white, green and creamy colour, uh, red and white, and then blue and orange. Which again, some of them are pretty nice, but yeah, this one's just sort of the most recognisable. So. I figured I'd uh, leave it as that. I'd right, say so looks wise, I think it looks pretty cool. I always liked this vehicle back when it was in Mud Runner as well. I'd say, uh, it, as far as say that manipulator crane and things go, I think it was uh, a bit better in Mud Runner than it is in this. But still, it's nice to see the vehicle back. It's funny when I uh, got in the cab now, I was like, bloody hell, it's actually right on drive. <laughs> Feels a bit weird in this game. Uh, it doesn't let you stick your head out the window or anything like that, but you can like rotate all the way around, you've got windows behind you, so I could see the garage. Uh, I can't, I don't think I've got any mirrors, but again, I can just like rotate my head around, so yeah, if you're doing first person driving, then it'd work out just fine. The horn, it's not too bad, a little bit squeaky, but nothing, it's not like an uh, annoying crap horn or anything. Uh, the rev counter wise, you see the dials on the middle, like uh, the dashboard, the center dial is the one that's got the revs but it's I can't see it from here really you can just see the needle moving there but I can't really tell what the revs are and that all I can really see is it revs it's one of the slower revving ones which kind of makes sense I didn't really expect it to be a yeah a bit of a quick one so setting off overall it's not too bad like doing the turning circle there better than I thought I thought it'd understeer a little bit more I haven't used these tires before so maybe these are a little better than the uh the normal stock ones. Trailer wise, I think it's pretty cool that you can actually have like the ramped flatbed, you know, just everything that's got like a hitch on it, even like the maintenance trailer and stuff. Which, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool because it's the sort of thing with like that attachment on the back they could have blocked that off. And obviously, you can have the uh, the three normal uh, tractor trailers, which, yeah, are really, really useful for doing the farming. So, for most other reasons, like, like I said, I get more use out of being able to have the maintenance trailer and even the ramp flatbed, all that sort of stuff, as much as that trailer does drive me mad. Uh, even driving out of the garage there, swerving to the right, it was actually uh, steering alright, but it's the understeer more feels like it kicks in when, if you've got a trailer on or stuff like that for a start, it's sort of, one way or another it seems to weigh the back down more so the front can scoot around a little bit. Um, and then on the farm and it just sort of turns a little bit wide, it's not It'd be nice if it had a tighter turning circle. But for the most part, as I have to say, like doing getting the footage and that tonight. Yeah, there was more often than not, I was kind of like pretty happy with how it went versus thinking, oh, like this thing is gonna drive me mad all night. I kind of figured it'd uh, take longer to get the footage than it did. Uh, going through that mud section there, I mean it ploughed through it pretty well. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, it was ticking along just fine. Like Once I went into high gear, there's a few times where it tried to slow me down a little bit, but it didn't try and kick me out of high gear or anything like that. And uh, yeah, again, because it's got nice, decently sized tyres, they're just good enough to sort of roll over terrain rather than having to cut through it. 
And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what this was like. I, hit, I only hit one tree there, but I didn't even bother reversing and going back because I, uh, I was on a nice roll. <laughs> and I had already been ramming trees tonight before I started getting this footage. And uh, yeah, it was like when I, I went to the farm when there's those strips of like 10 trees in a row and I just kept killing one tree and then I'd get caught on the carcass of the tree basically and it'd kind of just catch on it and hold me back so I never really got like a good row of trees going so yeah I tried to hit more than one tree back there but just again with the articulated steering it's not the easiest to be very precise with it or anything and going through that little swampy section I just did it um sometimes it can get most vehicles down to where it leave the stall in high or it's just practically not moving whereas this thing still kept enough pace to stay in high so yeah again respectable enough going along here bumping over the rocks I might have got one or two engine damage uh, suspension damage sorry but for the most part it bounced over these rocks with no issue it's not definitely not taking a lot of damage I've never really noticed driving this thing around that damage has ever been an issue certainly not yeah like you know just driving along the road taking that sort of damage that this game tries to do I'm going along here, I suppose this is about as flat out as the vehicle's going to go. Again, getting a little bit squirrely with the articulated steering. Hit the anti-terrorist barricade, only took about 200 damage or something, so yeah, that's not really going to be much of an issue. And then this section, it's always, always holds every vehicle back. Like, this first section is, like, super death mud. But I was curious when I was crawling along, would that dead tree in front of me kind of go under the nose, or would it catch... Thankfully that went under and then as soon as I touched the tree it just kind of fucked off, which is, uh, yeah, I like, <laughs> I appreciate that some in the, uh, the dead trees in phase 8 don't really do so much. This one, however, kind of caught, must have been uh, on the axle, I think, I was kind of wiggling around, because again, these are the ones that, after you sort of, yeah, bump into them a bit, they fall through the map, which is nice, and apart from that, I mean, it was actually doing pretty decent cutting across this river there's um there I believe I might have got caught on a tree rather than like it was I don't think it was just the mud itself but yeah the vehicle feels like it's got enough weight to it where the current washing to the side there wasn't really causing me any issues like I said it's just the tree carcasses which they seem to have dialed up since I mean there's a good example I ran that tree over got caught on it and it kind of fired me backwards and that's what kept happening I killed one tree every time so I kind of had a pretty good idea of what's going on with it. Uh, yeah, on to Northport, going through the snow here. It's actually pretty good on snow, I think. I'm going over this barrier, though, I had no issues getting the front over, but then there, kind of got caught on the knuckle. <laughs> Again, that's what she said. Um, yeah, and long story short, it, I ended up editing most of this out, because it was just... I was winching stuff all sorts. It, there's no nice way to get over it. In the end, I think I even went round the barrier. So yeah, just to keep the footage a little bit shorter, I cut most of that out. But you see, going along this section, going up there as well, it's normally, I'd say, at least sort of like super mud. And those trees and bushes, as you get to the other side, can slow particularly lighter vehicles down. That's one thing I have sort of learned that I quite like about this tonight, is um, it's got enough weight that it behaves a little bit more like you'd hope vehicles would again, when they just weigh nothing, it feels pretty unrealistic. Climbing up that rock though, the articulated steering just makes it a bit awkward once you shift to one side. It's yeah, it just doesn't turn within its own profile. It's like you've got to swing the nose or the back end round, one of the two, and uh trying to make like little precise corrections as I was driving up that rock was just not not going too well really. But again, it got there in the end, I'd sort of winch my way around. Going along here, I had I didn't have high hopes for it being able to jump this wall. I kind of thought the nose of it would get caught on these pipes, which it didn't, and it bumped its way up to there, but then the rear tyres are already clipping those first lot of pipes, so basically the wheelbase is just too short to where it wouldn't wouldn't let me do it. I was uh, jiggling, jiggling along the wall. I tried to get over to this side just to get out of the way from those pipes to see if I have enough engine power to jump over, but it wasn't. I was trying it for a little bit so I uh, did a winch to the back of the truck and to the tree that bumped my front end up and then yeah do a winch to the front drag myself over I think you can see there where it kind of catches on the sort of I don't know articulation knuckle <laughs> pretty technical term um, yeah it's still not having that 
and then I think eventually I just stuck a winch to the back of the truck and then to the tree and kind of uh, leave it over that way. It'd be nice if they did sort that out. It's the same thing though, I think uh, the Azov Antarctic, that can catch a little bit. Anything that's articulated in this game really, it kind of where the articulation happens, it's always got like, yeah, again, <laughs> I don't know, a knuckle poking out the bottom that uh, just catches on everything. And it got through those trees, no issue, even though it's a pretty tall vehicle. And uh, even again, motoring up this hill, like, in snow, it is pretty decent, it's sort of... It's one of them, really, where it's probably not going to come in handy all that often in snowy environments. And uh, obviously Phase 8, there's no snow going on on there. But yeah, I was pretty happy with how it uh, was handling snow and even going up like pretty steep mountain sides and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, for the cargo test, turn in. Again, I was actually quite surprised now. I thought it'd go a lot wider and almost need a three-point turn. I will say, as I was turning there, I was feathering the throttle, where normally I just floor it and let the vehicle go round, but as I already thought this would be terrible at it, I kind of did it a little favour and was uh, feathering the throttle instead that helps it get a little bit of a tighter turning circle. But yeah, overall, actually better than I thought there. I think it probably just comes into effect like, well, I don't know, the articulation didn't really feel like a problem when you got like a nice flat yard like that. It's more uh, when you're doing the farming, trying to go in a straight line along the field, you can bump in like the bits of terrain and it just starts adjusting your steering. And then the fact that, yeah, overall, the articulation isn't usually the, uh, the best for a nice tight turning circle. Going over here though, to like cutting across the road towards the, uh, the fuel station on Northport went pretty well through that mud. A lot of vehicles do get caught there, particularly like the brow of that hill I just went over. And then where I am now, roughly, there's they've been there about a year odd now, but they added some roots sticking out of the ground that can usually be a bit awkward. But because of the size of the tyres on this thing again, it, it does pretty well. It just kind of clawing its way over stuff. It can roll over stuff rather than yeah necessarily getting caught on it. And then as I was going around that corner, I purposely kept it floored then, so it went a little bit wider, but it was just to sort of have a rough idea of what the turning circle is like if you don't feather the throttle and sort of help it along a little bit. But even driving down here, it feels like it definitely slowed down a bit there, and this is kind of super mud, uh, super snow going down here really for the most part. A fair amount of vehicles don't even like getting into high gear, and even if they do along here, they sort of wheel spin and don't really move anywhere, whereas this thing... It stayed in high, but it's also, there's enough weight in the actual vehicle itself to where it doesn't just kind of sit on top of the snow and wheel spin. It Vehicles that have more weight to them, I find, tend to do better in the snow. And uh, yeah, this feels like it's at least got enough to kind of behave semi-realistically uh, when, yeah, we're on snowy maps. Driving along here, it's trying to find a bloody spot to park the trailer. <laughs> in the end, I shoved it over to the left, just because now I've filled that first layer of yard up. Like sod it, I'll start stacking them up behind it. But yeah, it took a little while, so again, edit it out to save uh, a bit of time. Going through the water, you can see the little patch of like deeper water I hit there. It's slowed it down a tiny bit, but nothing crazy. And uh, again, overall, pretty feels like it's uh, sort of purposefully making progress through there. So yeah, overall, can't complain. I was actually again surprised there. Like a lot of vehicles go a bit wide and hit that rock that was out to the left, but. I think it can be a little bit hit and miss with the steering, um, but I, I would say as well, again, like when you're doing the farming, you have to have the trailers on, and it's just the nature of that once you've got trailers on, it does affect the turning circle and just how much the front of this truck understeers. For the most part tonight, not having trailers on, it didn't feel like anywhere near as much of an issue. And uh, yeah, squeezing through that rock back there, it was close, but it's just about got narrow enough. Uh, like wheelbase or whatever that it didn't catch the rocks so I was able to scoot through there. And driving down there it was not too bad either. I was kind of following the roots of the road so steering wise it just sort of follows that. You can see the little tree up in front. It didn't completely cover it or anything considering this thing's got a big fat schnoz sticking out the front that in theory would block like a fair amount of your view but it's actually not too bad. You seem to sit high enough in the cab to where you can actually see over it for the most part. And again, it's a little bit weird driving down here. I'm, 
I can't remember the last time if I have even driven like a right hand drive vehicle down here so yeah it felt a bit odd doing that I'm usually used to gauging it <laughs> from the other side of the cab so if it looks like I'm driving a little bit erratically at the minute that was uh, well I normally do anyway but you know what I mean that didn't help that's why I'm veering off to the left a bit more than I'd like to now but going through the river it got through there but then I caught my nose on the uh, other side a little bit but kept it floored and uh, it scraped its way up there even though you do catch the nose here and there to its credit it's not, it doesn't really dig in and really catch into the terrain it's sort of like even though you will bump it it kind of is able to scrape its way through then if you keep it floored for the most part if the angle's too severe then you're obviously going to have to uh, reverse and give it another attempt. And yeah, even that mud section there, it ploughed through there pretty nicely, which that's, I'd say, at least kind of super mud levels, and that can hold quite a few vehicles up. It's places like this, though, where, again, the articulated steering... See there, for example, when it bumped the back up, it just automatically skidded me around a little bit. It didn't get me too bad there, but then not enough of a tight turning circle there, so I slid off to the left a little bit. And to be fair, it's actually pretty decent at not tipping. And certainly, like, with the angle I slid off there, it could have easily tipped like the certain vehicles that would if I went on that angle. It wasn't able to climb its way up, though, in the end, so I, f I was just, just kind of natural instinct in this game to just fire out a winch, and I managed to grab something, so I got my way out of there. But yeah, overall, the front obviously appears like it's got enough weight with the cab and the engine and all the rest of it. The back little section on its own is there's not necessarily loads of weight there. I've always found though in this game that tyres don't grip onto the rocks very well. It'd be quite cool if this had an option with chain tyres on it, just I'd be using them at the minute and uh, I do feel like maybe that would let it have the edge and it'd uh, climb the back end up those rocks. But yeah, it doesn't even give us the option. Although I will say, to be fair as well, when I've been driving along the roads it doesn't really feel like it understeers like the uh, some of the stuff that doesn't have chained on. I don't know if it's just the nature of this vehicle with the articulation. Maybe that's one aspect. Or, I don't know, because these days, when you wheel spin on the roads, you get sparks coming off, which would make sense with like chains wrapped around tyres. But, um, obviously, it does it as well with just like mud tyres, like, yeah, rubber tyres that shouldn't really be making sparks happen. So, I'm not sure if it's got some kind of, like, invisible chains added to it. I know it sounds a bit odd and I don't think that's the case for every vehicle because I've definitely been understeering when I've done a few of the other reviews but I don't know I just noticed it tonight that even though they're not chained or anything I wasn't really just I was still able to kind of decide where I'm steering when I was going down the roads and then uh, yeah over to the death mud section uh, this is like yeah devil's mud section I think we uh, nicknamed this one in the end and again, because it's got pretty decent big tyres, it was able to keep going. And uh, to its credit, it's been a little while since I've even had a vehicle that sort of made it through there without having to fire a winch over to the left. And uh, yeah, I didn't even have to do a rescue winch or anything in the end. It actually made it through there. And even though it wasn't rapid, it wasn't that slow considering how deep and uh, brutal the mud gets there. And going along here, stuff that tips quite easily tips there so this thing stayed nice and planted that was probably more me I think feather in the throttle there it, it didn't just kick me out of high it, I just chose a bad time to let off the throttle um, here's a good example of like the nose sticks out a bit so it couldn't go for a more severe test sort of a little bit further down the hill in the end back to yeah give up reverse got on a little bit of an angle it just helps the front wheel kind of get to the hill first so it can uh, change the angle and get the nose up there. <laughs> Sounds dodgy. And at least because it's got quite a short wheelbase it doesn't really get beached very often. If you catch something like yeah when I'm jumping over the wall or something obviously you can catch like that articulation bit but yeah overall going over brows of hills unless it's a very steep hill then uh, yeah that's never really an issue. Getting it to tip here, pretty much went over, landed pretty uh, comfortably back on its wheels and there's a few different times tonight I rolled it and uh, yeah, for the most part, the same same story really. It certainly feels like it favours staying on its wheels and it doesn't want to tip that easily. 
and then for the most part by the time I do tip especially that it's got quite a tall cab on it if you do tip you tend to get up to your roof and then at that point it kind of just wobbles back over and sort of wants to go back to its wheels so yeah that shouldn't catch you out too often and then climbing up that last hill there it was uh, doing pretty well again if it had chained it would have bit a little bit better into the rocks but I was able to scoot over to the left and uh, yeah it made it up there so to be fair most vehicles do make it up there but still there's a few I think that haven't and uh, now I'm in is it yeah Zimnagorsk at the minute but just grabbed a ramp flatbed got a goddamn horse on me and uh, yeah I'm off to the quarry You can see driving along now, like it's gripping in the mud pretty well. Probably there's an ambulance driving past that. They always do <laughs> every time I'm recording. Um, yeah, but because the vehicle's actually got some weight to it, it feels like it does sort of squidge down into the mud and it wants to keep driving really. Uh, I'm even in auto at the minute, in fifth gear, I think, out of five. And it's still ticking along. I was considering getting ready to drop it in high gear. I can't remember if I'd. Do I do it now or did I stay in? Oh yeah, there you go. But even at a very low speed, I was still able to get in high and it didn't try and kick me out or anything. Certainly wheel spin a little bit now, but this little section is a little bit uh, restricted to say the least. It's got dumb horse already waiting there. I bring a low for me every time I get to this section, but um, every time obviously I recover the vehicle I've got to load back to Zimnigor, so I often leave the loaf on this section and uh, now yeah got quite a few loaves building up which is never a bad thing of course get yourself a loaf and even driving down there on the quarry hill I managed to get a little bit of speed but yeah it wasn't really bumping around too erratically I'm not I'd, I'd even sort of say that maybe phase 8 the way they've uh, done some of the terrain might play a little part in it because this vehicle hasn't felt as annoying tonight on uh, all the other phases. Well, I kind of think now I'm sort of leaning towards I probably prefer this tractor to the K7M. I'll still fully withhold that judgment until I've done the uh, K7M review because it might be a similar story where it feels like it behaves more normally on the other maps. But yeah, overall, uh, the last time I used the K7M was doing that experimental field farming thing on the institute map and I was uh, I didn't have the the most fun times <laughs> doing that mission so it sort of put me off it a little bit and uh, even climbing through there got the concrete slabs it's still able to drive off just fine so grip wise in that kind of situation uh, yeah I can't really complain again I've not used these tyres before I don't think but I'll probably be sticking with them because they seem I don't think it was the tyres that are like the whole issue or anything, but overall these seem uh, to work pretty well. I'm climbing up the quarry hill, getting up the first hill no problem. I already had another loaf there, so I didn't bring me yellow loaf. But now, uh, quite a few vehicles have this issue, even stuff like the Colob didn't like this section. Quite a lot of stuff doesn't, but yeah, it's not able to haul that... Um, ramped flatbed kind of over the brow of the first hill and I could kind of tell now it's not going to happen one thing I will say is once you pull in like a lot of heavy cargo like that and you're going uphill and stuff it feels like the revs are running out a little bit it, like yeah there's not I don't know it's like you sort of the torque in the vehicle seems to vanish a little bit so uh, yeah it's not the first time I've had to Sending the loaf to uh, help me get up this hill. So if you place him like that, just at the edge of the rock. Stick the winch on. And then hoover him in a little bit. So he kind of drags his way along the rock. And then let off the winch button. So he drives forward. The loaf, I mean, look at him. Doing like the prancing horse Ferrari badge thing. Probably get a cease and desist from him now. <laughs> Loaf will do a plot twist, send them a cease and desist. Make them have a prancing loaf on their uh, badge. But yeah, as you can see, I mean, look, the loaf is a goddamn meaty horse of a vehicle. He's got some serious power. He is pulling a tractor 
and a ramped flatbed and two lots of uh, concrete slabs up a particularly awkward hill when the ramped flatbed is also beached on the brow of that first hill. See? Get to have a loaf. Little situations like that. His little mobile winch point. He does his job. He knows what he's doing. And can you see now, I think I'm caught on a little rock, but I can kind of scoot over to the left with that. But yeah, just the power feel, like, of the torque, it just sort of feels like it gets taken away a little bit when you uh, get sort of heavy loaded with cargo and all the rest of it. A little bit sketchy there, but nothing too bad. I've seen the trailer was thinking about tipping, but it didn't. Good news. Didn't like going into high gear that time. Got it in that time though, which you could see how slow I was going, and I'm kind of trying to start going up the hill and that. So uh, yeah, in some aspects, for the most part, the high gear is pretty lenient. But there is situations where instead of just wheel spinning, it will kick you out of high gear and say stalling and all the rest of it. It already has now, that's why I've gone down into the low range in the high low. And uh, I've been up this hill enough times, I kind of know if you shimmy around to the left and right, there's sort of little patches where you get a bit more grip, so I kind of, yeah, was doing just that really. You shift over to the right, and then when you get to that rock, start shifting back over to the left, and you can usually find a little bit more grip. But it was pretty much at its limit now. It's definitely not happy about it, and you can see with the tractor tyres, sometimes they're kind of juddering and stopping. It's, uh, yeah. It sort of does feel like where you're running out of torque and all the rest of it. And there's another loaf already sat up there. There's a the yellow loaf in the top left. I drove him up there, but then just parked him on top of that rock. <laughs> it suited him. Um, yeah, this loaf was just already there, but he's not really in the loaf hole at the minute. So it was moving a little bit, but it did the job. It did it enough. Got me high enough so I could fire out a winch to the tree up there. Which this vehicle was going to need to help anyway. I don't how long, however long I sat there, I don't think I would have uh, been able to climb the hill all by myself. But not a terrible effort, I will say that there's certainly plenty of vehicles that have done worse. So this is the sort of thing though where articulated steering is a pain in the ass. I was trying to go around the corner, it's already understeered a bit and gone wide, but now when I'm trying to reverse with the trailer you can see it's just, it's forcing my nose round like the other way more if anything, it ended up being an even wider turn, so... I was messing around there for about five minutes, hence why I just edited a big chunk of that out. We got out there eventually, just so I could fly down this hill. There's another goddamn horse <laughs> all over the place. Oh, and again, I apologise, I didn't realise it had glitched right there. I suppose these were the two bits, yeah, like it did a wheelie there, and then as I went down here, the trailer, like the weight of the trailer on the hitch is kind of pushing the back end of the tractor down, so it was making me do a wheelie, which looked pretty cool and all the rest of it. Not the best thing for, uh, precision driving and all the rest of it, but I didn't actually tip when I got down the hill. Again, this thing is decently planted. Whatever weight it has got does generally seem to sit pretty low down. Kind of in the areas painted red on the vehicle, everything that's yellow is probably acting pretty lightweight from uh, what it seems. And then crossing the uh, ice it kind of, as you're driving over it inevitably punches through at some point just because there is enough weight to it. But that's probably one of the situations where the articulated steering does come in handy because you can steer left and right and the ice can't really lock you in. Although I do think they have updated the ice to a degree so it's not as insane as it used to be where it was just chunks of ice that would just catch on you like every two seconds. I couldn't just special it. it I was in fifth gear it just, yeah, it was having none of it. So I decided to ram the R87. Uh, again, <laughs> as I normally do when I'm there, and then yeah, jumped in the water, and you can see at this point it's definitely not a floater. This one sank pretty convincingly, which I personally prefer because there's just situations where it helps. And yeah, apologise, there's a little glitch there. Um, going over the river though, because it does actually sink. It, yeah, it claws along the bottom, bumping over a few rocks and that, but pretty decent as it uh, goes across there. No major issues. The snorkel on it, I don't think it gives you an option to change the snorkel or anything, but from what it looks like, it sits in the top middle of the cab. 
you can see like the little yellow sort of disc at the front. Uh, I'm pretty certain that's it. Whatever it is, it certainly sits pretty high, so I reckon that is it. And then, uh, yeah, since the river crossing, well, I didn't realise it had glitched, but I, d I don't know. There was something around it I wasn't too happy when I was crossing it, so I just decided to swerve off into this part of the river, which again sort of helps showcase how deep it can go. <laughs> that's what she said. And uh, a bit of stalling going on there. I was trying to go on a bit of an angle to sort of go with the flow of the river a little bit because that can be quite restrictive. And yeah, you can see, I mean, it went across there just fine, but there's a lot of rocks in the base of this river and uh, just overall the game doesn't like clawing over rocks. You can see now with the sparks coming off the wheels, even though they're not chained. Jumping off here, you can see a little streak in the background in the air. That was a, uh, a Hummer that's been flying around. Uh, yeah, jumped off there, did a bit of a dramatic roll and all the rest of it, but again, pretty well weighted to its wheels, so it made it back. So it came back with the uh, goddamn horse, yeet him off there, <laughs> does like a mega headbutt on me. Helps tilt me over a bit more, and this was my, I should have turned left then, and I turned right, and so I kind of articulated it the wrong way where it wanted to tip back. I reckon if I'd turned left and maybe got to fire a winch out, I might have got out of that one. So I switched the loaf. His engine fired up, but then it said stalled, which obviously is not is not the case with the loaf. Fix his engine while I was there, just because I thought if I do fire the engine up, I don't want it to start saying stalling on me. And you see, it says engine stall, but switch to the K700, switch back to the loaf, and now he fires up. And like I said, if you don't start, you ain't turning the key hard enough. So he jiggles himself into a safer position. There's plenty of stuff in the cliffs that I could winch to, but to be honest, it's generally a pain in the ass, it's all loaded trees for the most part that pop out. So it stuck a winch to the uh, the K700 and I was like, well, sod it. I agree. <laughs> I see what you're trying to do, loaf. And uh, yeah, there you go. Get yourself a loaf. And then I drove over to this side. I actually thought because of the weight of this vehicle it had uh, put up some kind of restraint, resistance, but no. Uh, uh, that's another pretty good example of like where the weight must basically be like where the tyres are. That was uh, ridiculously easy to tip. So yeah, going in for a, uh, a drowning test, and to be fair, uh, I'm going to have to say it, but it's got deeper than most vehicles for a long time. Um, a lot of stuff, especially like, seems to float in all sorts recently, so you never really get that far. But yeah, that time, that thing just uh, sort of sent it, and until it takes a big enough hit on the engine where it automatically stalls you. Uh, like I say, yeah, it went pretty deep. <laughs> what she said. Uh, sent in the loaf, as usual, on a rescue mission. Took a little bit of faffing around, nothing too crazy. Like, I think the fact that the vehicle was just so far in, I was uh, yeah. Luckily the old uh, the goddamn horse, he's got some decent winch length. Got it done, hoovering it in. By now I knew at some point, press square, fire the engine up. It helped if the truck was facing the normal way, it'd be easier to pull out then, but because it's facing the other way, I don't know. The game just makes it a bit more awkward. And I went to go and do. Um, I'm going to go and cross the river kind of in the background where Dan's got his crane out. But as I'd just kind of. Sm I was messing around doing other things, so I'd used a lot of the loaf's roof rack and all the rest of it, so I decided just to quickly recover to the garage and bring everything back. And uh, yeah, this was the attempt. You see again, low lands at the bottom, says engine stalled. Was that while I'm waiting? <laughs> I already know. I know what the loaf's up to. Fix the engine. Switch from the uh, the K700 back to the loaf. And see engine stalling. And then it fires up. Like a goddamn horse of a vehicle. Is winch on. I know that winch in the cliffs, uh, that one, is an actual tree that doesn't pop out of the ground every two seconds. And there you go, Loaf Rescue gets his way out of it. And as for tipping this, at least this time it's kind of sitting where I've sort of got to pull it uphill a little bit. Pop I think that was a glitch there, that's not an edit. Um, yeah, w winch to the front this time, just to kind of pull it round to my way and uh, well there you go. The loaf got it done. So I drove over here, loaded the loaf onto the roof. It won't let you pack it because it's too narrow but the loaf can actually kind of sit within its wheelbase on the roof so 
sits up there pretty nicely and I can also put it sideways on the front of this truck which helps with the weight when you've got a trailer on and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, sending it across here, I knew I'd be able to do the zombie winch situation which is what I was doing, but it's not every time, but when you stick a winch to a vehicle they normally turn their wheels and because this thing is articulated it really does turn like a banana so uh, instead of going across the river it kind of did a u-turn and started driving its way back out so I messed around, I aimed it the right way and all the rest of it, again it was a little bit long and drawn out with the footage but I made it over to the, uh, the other side of the river only just, I managed to get to where uh, I could fire the K700 back up because it was trying to turn it crashed into that like red edge of the map barrier but it was able to climb up that hill on like the little non-secret secret island in the corner of White Valley um, and this was just a quick demonstration of like it able to pick a hay bale up I mean yeah it's cool that it's got this manipulated crane thing but it's a little bit faffy if you know what I mean and I've said it before it's not really their fault that it's sort of difficult to make any more simple. The only thing it could do with doing is when you just press it up on the d-pad if you could just press square and enter like the forklift menu that way and yeah the hay bales at least the ones for me are still being a bit weird I was trying to steal it and then yeah now it starts floating slowly to the ground Illuminate hay confirmed um, yeah and then now just a bit of farming really I'm on yeah it's still the crossroads map there's actually a different K700 one I prepared earlier that was already sat there with the trailers. Uh, yeah, just to give you a little example, really, of farming. <laughs> it's pretty simple. I've already got more sort of detailed videos on it. And even the turning circle. I mean, again, it's certainly not great. But even just driving around now, it sort of felt like it wasn't doing too badly seem to relatively speaking maintain like a straight line going across the field and yeah you just kind of got to accept the wider arches at uh, either end of the field but at least with that field in particular it's not got trees and everything lying in each section so it uh, made it a lot sort of more hassle free and then going up the mountain in White Valley uh, this is pretty decent because normally the snow for this first section can be a little bit slow. I quite often edit it out of most videos and just have this bit at the end because once you get high enough up the mountains the whole super snow situation tends to calm down and then you just get like normal snow where it's pretty simple. About now it just turns into yeah normal snow. But yeah this thing was actually uh, keeping a pretty decent pace from like the bottom of the mountain to sort of halfway up started stalling there so again eventually it will kick you out of the high gear and there's a little bit slow crawling up here I kind of had to stick over to the left a little bit more because driving over the rock now without chained it doesn't like it I just edited a bit there I was trying to get the video yeah under 40 minutes so I had to uh, clip, a, clip a few bits but it made it to the top here possible thumbnail I don't know probably doubtful actually and then uh, now back on the same side of the mountain that I just climbed up, I was just trying to roll it, and again it's not the easiest thing to roll, a typical, I apologise, there's a glitch right in the one second of footage that I wanted. It did actually manage to roll a few times going down there, but you can kind of see every time pretty much it wants to get back to its wheels. And eventually it did just that. Didn't really take a lot of damage or anything as it's rolling either. And then yeah, recover it to the garage, and that's about it for the uh, test. Like I say, overall, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised as I was going throughout the night. Um, obviously, as far as phase 8 goes, it's just more of a tractor and it's the farming, and that is a little bit uh, iffy in some respects. But yeah, driving across the maps, and the fact that it can have trailers and the ramped flatbed, there is actually going to be some other uses for it. Um, and it wasn't the most horrific thing to drive, certainly in some of the snowy areas it was actually, yeah, kind of doing alright, pretty decent because it's got a nice bit of weight to it. Uh, money wise, once it's fully upgraded I think it's nearly 200 grand and in here it's about 155 odd grand. We'll say though, it's in the uh, list in the truck store right next to the loaf, that's some serious prime real estate. But yeah, that's uh, like I say, overall kind of could live with it really, so uh, yeah. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. 
it's all alive because he saved me bacon again and I'll be back soon.